Hi guys, welcome to Shopaholic. My name is Esti. It's almost spring in Sweden now. Today, I spent a beautiful day on a hilltop with Andreas, and we met this little cute fellow. We adore dogs, and we hope to have one when we retire. This dog is so sociable. He got really excited when he saw us. It's a pure joy to spend time with animals, don't you think? In today's cook and chat, I will show you how to cook this delicious dragon chicken and chat about late winter in Sweden. Besides skiing, snowboarding, scooter, there are also other activities you can do during this time of the year. And I shall share some of the unique experience while I cook. I hope this information is useful for those of you who are planning to visit Sweden in the future. Dragon chicken is a really delicious appetizer for those of you who love Indo-Chinese cuisine. This dish is very simple to prepare. It fits all occasion and is perfect as a side dish to a fried rice, for example. Usually, boneless chicken is used in this recipe. It is shallow fried and then blend into a tomato sauce. The vibrant red color from the tomato sauce is very appealing. Therefore, it is tasty and it can be made effortlessly. And if you are ready, let's get started. In today's recipe, I'm using chicken breast. This is the most common meat in the Swedish diet. Because Swedish usually do not have so much time in the kitchen, it is fast and easy to prepare. And the cost is between 7 to 10 US dollar per kilo in frozen pack. I personally feel that Swedish people are very active people. They rather spend the time working at a garden or go for a walk than to spend time in the kitchen. Food is not so important for most Swedish. I think there is nothing wrong with that because life should be well balanced and getting active is a way to enjoy quality life. Here are my personal thoughts and what I learned about living in a cold country like Sweden. In March, it gets pretty dark almost around 3 to 4 pm. The Swedes are pretty good in investing own quality time in oneself. The Swedes are pretty active between 8 am to 15 pm. If the weather is sunny, they will do it by all means to spend time outdoor hoping to get some suntan and fresh air. Like what we did today at the hilltop. As you probably know, I am living in the north part of Sweden close to the Lapland. There are plenty of snow here. This nature offered the opportunity for dark sledding. Dark slate is a slate pulled by one or more slate dogs used to travel over ice and through snow. Imagine yourself sitting on a sled being pulled through the silent pine forest across the frozen lake. It's pretty thrilling yet restful. Besides dog sledging, I also enjoy ice fishing. This is a typical winter activity where you drill a hole in a frozen lake with a special rod and try to catch fish. If you love to relax and take it easy, then you shouldn't miss the hot tub or the sauna during the winter by the ice lake. There are many barbecue huts in the nature. Normally, woods and barbecue pits are found in this shelter. You can utilize them for free. The sweet usually love to barbecue sausage and marshmallow with the family and friends. In most cases, they are very satisfied with just a bun, a coffee or a hot chocolate. And during the late winter, when the temperature rises and the sun starts to come out, it is a scene to stay indoor. This was according to my ex-Swedish neighbor. I am not so keen going out for a walk during spring, especially at the beginning. The reason is because I felt quite annoying when I see dog sheep on the streets. It's a common thing that some dog owners do not pick up the sheep from their pet. And when the snow starts to melt, the dog sheep become defrost and it became very smelly. So, can you imagine 4 months of dog sheep accumulating along the streets everywhere you go? It is not a pretty scene, isn't it? And it's absolutely disgusting. Imagine accidentally stepping on a pile of sheep. This can't be a pleasant experience, don't you think? This is actually the only problem I have in spring. And I hope that the authority could do something about it. Overall, I think the country is very beautiful. The Swedes are generally very helpful and friendly. Maybe I live here long enough. But Sweden to me isn't as cold as you might expect. Travel during the winter is somewhat required planning as well as serious winter clothing. As you can see here, the tomato sauce I'm using is quite watery, 
So I let this simmer for 5 to 10 minutes actually, so that it reduced to half its portion. This will improve the flavours of the tomato and when you pour the chicken in, the chicken will not become too sloggy. Mmm, I think the chicken is ready to be served. Let's put the topic aside and let's eat. I can't believe that this dish actually just took 30 minutes for me to cook. I really like the crispiness from the chicken and the sour from the tomato sauce. After tasting it, it reminds me of the Chinese sweet and sour chicken. I think this dish is perfect with noodles too. It's super delicious and easy to make. I hope you like this recipe and give this a try and send me a comment. Did you know that oily fish like herring and salmon contain omega-3 fatty acids? It's a type of polyunsaturated fat which can help to reduce total blood cholesterol. In next week's episode, I will show you how to make this delicious authentic Swedish fried herring sandwich. I will also feature some of the photos taken during this week. So you have a better idea what is in my grocery bag and what I have been eating. Thank you so much for watching and sharing our videos. Give us thumbs up if you like this video. Till then, I'll see you again. Bye, take care.